Class is dismissed, boys and girls. <laughs> Previously on the YTV Retrospective. It's the Miracle Koala! Get him! Come on. You can do this, Mega Man. Beat up Crash Man. You can do it. Come on. Yes. Yes. Oh, come on! Oh, man. This part is sure tough. When the video game industry was booming in the mid-80s to the early 90s, there were many different ways of finding help when it comes to being certain parts of a game. Occasionally you would find a good phone hotline, but the main source of information was magazines. Case in point, Nintendo Power. If only there was a way that my TV could tell me some tricks on how to beat this level. very rarely attempted to go into television during the 80s and early 90s, but mostly as cartoon adaptations, like the Saturday Supercade, Pac-Man, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, and the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Canada played a big part in making content that focused on video games. There were staples like the Electric Playground and Reviews on the Run with Victor Lucas and Tommy Tallarico, but the best one came from YTV, and it was called Video and Arcade Top 10. Ever wanted to compete in video game madness? This show was for you! Ever wanted to prove that you can get a good high score and get bragging rights? This show was for you! Did you ever want to listen to a great remix of Crash Men's theme from Mega Man 2? This show is definitely for you! Video and Arcade Top 10 was a show where you can prove your gaming prowess to hundreds of different video games. The show was hosted by Gordon Michael Wolvett, aka Gord the PJ Man. Later, the host changed to the one that everyone knows, Nicholas Schimmelpenick, aka Nicholas Pickles, and a plethora of co-hosts that changed from time to time, including Laxa Doig and Liza Former, many of whom were taken from a former game show that YTV had called Clips. The show was usually divided up into segments. First... Game action was where we get to see kids compete with others in a game chosen in advance. The rules usually change from game to game, whether it would be for most points, complete a task or a goal, or who can reach farther in a game. But sometimes it can be confusing, like this one for Super Smash Bros. Melee. Alrighty, here's how the game works. The player with the least amount of damage wins. If it's a tie, then the player with the most time remaining wins. Okay, the less damage rule makes sense, but how do you have individual times in Super Smash Bros. Melee? Oh, classic mode. Right. Obviously it should have been. FINAL DESTINATION! NO ITEMS! FOX ONLY! Or in some cases where the game is intentionally multiplayer, like say, Mario Party 2, they just play on individual consoles. And again, it is one of the few games that can ruin friendships. I don't blame them for going this route. Each contestant had a studio partner and a home partner that could have potential to win prizes as well if their contestant won, specifically copies of the game they were playing. While the kids are playing, Nick and the co-host would give you tips and tricks on how to improve your skills in each of the games. The next segment usually is... Much like their music predecessors, YTV Rocks, Rock and Talk, and The Hit List, they had a segment of the show talking about what movies are having their VHS or DVD put on the retail shelves. But not just any shelf. The shelf of either Rogers Video or... Jumbo Video! <laughs> Jumbo Blockbuster! Why'd you have to go? It was a
was a great time where you could rent a video game console before buying it. <laughs> Viewers at home could win a copy of the movie if they sent in the answer to the question on the screen. Then it usually goes back to game action to see how the contestants are doing, and see who wins. The winner gets not only a copy of the game they played, and a prize pack which usually includes tickets to Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament, but also they get to pull a ball out of a hat for a random prize, a lot of which was usually toys from Hasbro. And then it goes to... Wait, there's a music section in this show too? That's two shows that talk about music, and the other one was in prime time! Blue Rodeo. And it goes back to game action, except this time, they change the game in contestants. Finally, before they get to the winners... Letter time! It's letter time! Letter time! Letter time has Nick reading a random letter from someone watching at home. If their letter is read on air, they get to win a copy of one of the games played on the show. It was pretty great seeing if you had the opportunity to win a free game. Video and Arcade Top 10 premiered in 1992, and lasted all the way to 2008, and became the longest running show that aired on YTV, beating the hit list and the very messy series. Though the story of Video and Arcade Top 10 didn't end there. Even though there weren't any new episodes being made, it was successful with syndication on both YTV and small and upcoming channels like G4 and Game TV. Before time crept up on the show, and much like the video game magazines that gave info before it, faded into the sands of time. This great show lasted for 16 years, and left a strong impact on many who watched it. Just remember, play the game. When we come back from this commercial break, <laughs> just a heads up, this show's gonna get a little messy. Oh no. <laughs> Next time on the YTV Retrospective. Take you on a ride to a place that's live where the music is pumping to make you vibe with his always up in the new round the corner. Gonna play a little up. Make you jump to the beat because it's time for a treat with the questions and answers you try to compete. And when your time's over, you say, What you gonna do with that in your screen? Spin the wheel, speed around me. Say what's it gonna be? Oh, <laughs> 